Hello to you, my fellow Dark Ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? In between the episodes, I haven't done much. I have been trading with our villagers. I have been making some drills. And well, I have been planning on what to do today. And by planning, I just mean going through the JEI and see what is our next bottleneck. And yes, it's stainless steel. You know, this guy meows. And then my cat also does the same thing, so I get confused which one it is. Anyways, before we get to stainless steel, we need a vacuum freezer. Because apparently stainless steel is hot. I have just set up the patterns, we're crafting it, that is nice. Then we need some of these frost proof machine casings. The quest book asks us for 33, so let's make 33. But as usual, it's probably wrong. All these things take time. While everything else is cooking up, let us get back to stainless steel. One of the items that we should not have, but we have it, is manganese. It's not a humongous amount, but we have 277 and we're getting it as a byproduct of tungsten anyways i just wanted to tell you we don't care very good we can craft the dust so i guess let us cook it as well takes time oh i like that word again as usual i have no idea how many of these guys are we going to need so for the moment we place it over there in the basement but today we're going to move them to their permanent location you guys know the drill as usual we have an input hatch output hatch steam and a pattern provider we do have a few hot stainless steel ingot and we do have donkeys that is always nice and i'm assuming now that it has been cooled down we should have something i still haven't got it yet ah yes auto output Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stainless steel has tons of uses, but one of the main uses that we wanted immediately is cantle, because that is going to provide us with far better coils, uh, which I'm hoping we can just switch it like this. Yes, shape invalid. Yes, yes, cantle. I don't know if it's faster or not. Maybe it is. With cantle, we are supposed to process titanium, but we have been processing titanium for a while. So here is the quest. And now we need to start thinking about the rest of the automations, which we are going to do it over here, at the other side of the base. And yes, since we are not going to use the blocks from Botania, this system can go. Don't you worry, we're going to replace it with a far better system. Ah, so we needed a very small expansion to our base for a few more machines from modern industrialization because we need more automations. One of the items that we need to start crafting is polyethylene. Sounds familiar, I know. And yes, I did check, there is no go to hell. You would be able to get it from oil in a distillation tower, or you would be able to make it from sugar solution. This is the recipe that we're going to go because I think it's going to be far easier. I believe everything starts with a mixer, so there you go. And I'm assuming we're going to need tons of turbines, so let's make 10. We also need a free P2P tunnel. You're good. Because over here, I did install a quantum ring. I don't think we need to have a dedicated... Hello. I have night vision and we have no lightning within the base. So yeah, that's a problem. So a pattern for sugar solution. Macerator is going to give us the best rate for sugar. And I just realized this could be a challenge. Uh, we need more channels here, no? Yes, we are going to need far more channels. Because I also need to install turbines and that requires a bit more channels. It's fine. I guess we just use another P2P tunnel for steam. Yes, we are making polyethylene with only four machines. We have a mixer, which is making us sugar solution. We have a very slow distillery, which is making us ethanol. And I really love the achievement for that. We have a chemical reactor, which is going to take that ethanol and it's going to give us sulfuric acid as well as ethylene. And the final chemical reactor is going to make it into polyethylene. There are two reasons that the chemical reactors are not working. One is that we we have garbage CPUs, so it can only do two things at the same time. And secondly, I think I ordered too much. I thought I ordered 20 buckets, but we're using 21,000 sugar. Anyways, why do we need polyethylene? That is a very good question. First off, we need it in order to make the advanced upgrade. That means we would be able to upgrade all of our machines. The second reason is the digital circuit board, which is used in making, obviously, the digital circuit. And if you're wondering what the hell is going on in the grand scheme of things, we're trying to inch forward towards quantum physics. The infinity armor. It's not gonna happen for a while, but you know, that's the goal. This is also a horrible way of cabling, but I'm happy with it. Oh, we have so many things that we don't know how to craft. <laughs> okay, I'll think of them later. For me, the most important thing is the upgrade kits. You know what? I worked here a little bit. I was tired of the CPU situation, so I added more CPUs. I had lunch. I took a nap. And this guy was still making me polyethylene. The 10 buckets. Apparently, the rate that we get it from sugar is incredibly garbage, but uh, that's the only solution. Because in order to make the distillation tower and get ethylene from oil, requires the circuit, which needs the polyethylene in order to make the circuit board. But it hasn't been all for nothing. I had to reorder it one more time. I had to change the recipe. Uh, where is it? At first I was using lead in order to make polyethylene, which gives you a worse rate. But if you use chromium, you get a far better rate. So I'm using that one. But we do have a few advanced upgrades. That is good. That means at least I can improve this process. 
you're not getting power. That is weird. Anyways, now the point is we can make the circuit that I wanted. We need two for the distillation tower. We might not make the distillation tower this episode, but let us make the circuits. And I just wanted you to look at this recipe. That is just for two circuits. That's it. Amazing. It even took a while to craft the circuits, but any second we should get it. Well, we have the one. Thank you. No need for sodium anymore. I needed sodium? For what? Uh-huh. I don't know. Well, I had to ask, but yeah, in order to make the high voltage machines, you're going to need sodium batteries, which requires sodium. It gets much better because you're also going to need the digital circuit for each and every one of the holes. That is going to be a stupendous amount. And I cannot stress enough on the stupendous. We need to go a bit crazy. First things first, we need to fix our steam situation. So we are going to set up an advanced bronze boiler. And I think this is a decent supply of steam, which also means I can finally run all the quarries at the same time. Now it is time to get some rubber instead of trading for it, which for some reason requires a blast furnace, but who cares? At least we have rubber. Our next order of business is sodium, which we can obtain it by electrolyzing salt. Sodium is going to give us better batteries, which is going to allow us to make turbo machine holes. But before we get to the actual distillation tower, we need some neodymium, which comes from mozonite. We don't have a huge supply, but that should be enough to get us started. And yes, it takes two minutes. Also, just as a very small reminder, we are doing all of this in order to make a distillation tower, which sadly also requires annealed copper, which for the moment we are going to craft it manually because it does require oxygen and a different automation. Anyways, we can finally craft a distillation tower controller and you might be thinking that we're done. No, because we also need around 80 stainless steel casings as this stupid thing is a multi-block. And just because on this channel we have a few viewers who have problems with editing, I just wanted to mention that from the time that I started making the boiler until I managed to finish the distillation tower, it has been 6 hours and 30 minutes. And that is called cutting out the boring parts. And hopefully not cheating because it has been a while since I started this mod pack. And also I have no idea what he meant it is all the same mods because apart from applied energistics and botania, all of them are brand new. This is how people are suggesting that I should play Greg Tech New Horizons, which is also a bit funny because that also has botania and applied energistics. Anyways, let us get down to business. We do have our oil drill and we do have a tank which is banking the oil. However, the crude oil itself is basically useless. We need to distill it into something else. So I think here's what we're going to do. We're going to have three distilleries. It's a very stupid idea, I know, because technically speaking, it's far more efficient to use another distillation tower in order to get the oil byproducts. But I don't want all the byproducts, I just want naphtha. Basically, what we're going to do is that we're going to have a few export buses instead of a pattern provider. We put the distilleries on top and I'm not really sure how this works, but can we set the recipe? I want sulfuric naphtha. Oh, I can. Then look. So if I export the crude oil, you should get it. Yes. Nice. So with some power, you should give me some sulfuric naphtha. Perfect. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's going to warm up. We can upgrade it. And we also have three of them. Yeah, I thought three distilleries are not going to be enough. We have a total of five of them right now because every iteration, it gives us like 300 millibuckets of sulfuric naphtha, which is not a lot. But we also have a chemical reactor, which is taking that sulfuric naphtha, mixing it with hydrogen, and it's giving us naphtha. This is not the ideal recipe. The ideal recipe is that we don't use crude oil. We would use shale oil. The problem is the drill because it needs the digital circuit, digital circuits requires a lot of polyethylene, which we don't have. But that means now we should be able to export the naphtha into the distillation tower. Yes, yes, I'm aware it needs power. So there you go. Here is some steam. So are you giving me anything? No. Oh yeah, of course it doesn't give me anything. <laughs> My bad. I literally missed one step. We also have to steam crack the naphtha, which I guess we can use one of these chemical reactors. Uh, let us see if we can craft it. I don't know. Give me 10 buckets. Yes, you're working and you're fast decently. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the stupid thing that has to go inside the distillation tower. Yes, we are getting it. Are you operational? Yes, perfect. And we should get some byproducts, maybe? This is going to be a very slow process, yeah, <laughs> very slow. But we did manage to get something, yeah, a mediocre amount of items. And by items, I meant fluids. But here's the deal, we don't want to import them into our system. What we're going to do is that we're going to use some tanks. I have already made a pattern for the quantum tank from Tech Reborn and that should keep a crazy amount of fluid. It's just that we're missing a few items. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I have filled in the missing patterns. Uh, do you work? Yes. It needs 2500 iron. It's very cheap. Stupendously cheap. I had a few more other issues with the patterns, but yeah. Now it's finally working. Don't blame me, just look at the amount of patterns that I have. It's crazy, but very good. Eight of them already. 
and we do have eight outputs anyways. So these guys are set to auto output and I'm missing one. Oh, it's one block too tall. Well, yeah, it's one block too tall. Okay. How did I do that? We just have to configure these guys so that they accept from the back. And then in order to read them, we're going to have a storage bus. And you know, connect it to our AE2 system. So this one is Toluene. Do we have it in our system? Yes. Very nice. Also, another question is, can I take it out or do I have to configure the tank? No, we're good. But remember, the entire reason that we did this was ethylene, so that we would be able to make polyethylene for the stupid electronic circuits. And I think now we're actually getting a far better yield, so we can make like 20 buckets very fast. I should really light up the place. It's not very fast, but it's faster than what it should be. Okay. I can live with that. Anyways, moving on from technology, we have something far more important to attend to. Dealing with mobs. There is a mod called Reaper and if it goes well, I have a lovely plan for it. Also, can you like give me all the 20 at the same time? Did you know there is something called a Reaper Generator? Aha, which I kind of forgot, we need more of these. <laughs> so what does this mod do? I will show you, it's actually very interesting. What we are making at this very moment is called a Soul Generator. Hopefully. Did I mess it up? Yes, I double messed up. First off, it's called Reaper Generator. Secondly, this is the block I have to drop. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have it. I know it looks weird, but don't you worry. What this does is that it's going to kill mobs and generate power. And you can upgrade it. It's just that I'm a bit scared. I'm afraid it might kill me as well. I'm not saying I'm a mob, but weird things can happen. We put you in. I'm alive. I'm alive, right? Yes, I'm fine. And we just wait for somebody to spawn. If we cannot bring the mobs here, we take it to the mobs. You stay there. Sure, sure. Yeah. What's the range? Maybe it has to be closer. Do you need a redstone signal? You made me mad. Ah, you need a soul catalyst. Okay, that makes sense. So if we put instant kill, what will happen? Instantly killed. Working as intended. Do you kill me? No. If I stand here, I'm fine. Actually, one of the things that I should have probably checked is that how much power did you make? I broke it. Gather around, boys. Nice. It's not a ton of power, but it's decent. So generating power from mobs which are spawning next to my base and sometimes on top of my base is just for fun. What I'm really hoping this guy is going to do is to kill the wither. Ah oh, yes, there is a wither proof block from Keybay. It's a lovely mod. It has like literally everything. I don't know how many we need. A hundred? We just want to make a cube. And apparently that was a quest. The worst part of my life is that I have no idea where I left the generator over there. Okay, we do have our frame. Here is the wither. We block him. Hopefully he's not gonna run away. No, we're good. So we put the generator in, we put the upgrades, and of course the catalyst. Oh, one shot the wither. So how would you automate it? Because I need to provide it with soul catalyst and I need to extract the power? Well, one problem at a time. Let us first get some soul steel and the final one. That should be 16 blocks, yes. Now that we know this system is going to work for killing the wither, let us try to set up something. Well, obviously this is going to be our killing chamber and there is something called a wither builder. Uh, this is also from Kibe, but I'm not sure how it works. It doesn't really have a great GUI, so you're like, do you need power? Do you need redstone? Where are you going to place the wither? Okay, that answers it. So based on how this guy works, which is with a redstone pulse, um, I guess our automation is going to be a bit different. I was hoping that we're going to use applied energistics, but apparently that's not gonna happen. Also, I should have checked, are you blast resistant? Because if you're not, then you're kind of garbage. No, we're good. It's just that he gets stuck, which is fine. We can kill him. Don't you worry. So I guess you have to go one block lower, like so then we should be fine. You know, it's actually not as great as you would think because uh, there is a giant flaw with it. The thing is, if you place it the way that I placed it, then you don't have any access. You just have access to one side and you need to give it a redstone signal as well as material. Essentially, what I'm saying is that we don't have enough sides. Well, we can always go one block lower. Hopefully this works. Let us try this. No, nope. you can send the signal. The wither is not going to form. So it's not really going to be a fancy setup. And we also need to have a hopper hawk because this would be able to collect the drops through blocks. I could not find anything similar in this mod pack. So I guess this will do. We put you under here and an entangled chest. I also made myself a redstone link from create. And now you should summon a wither. Oh, a ditch killing thingy. This should take care of him. Yep. And did we pick up the star? 
Yes. I'm just incredibly sad that it's not very fancy. Also, you can't spam it. But who cares? We don't need that many nether stars in this mod pack, I guess. Maybe for the hearts? Actually, there is a way of making it a bit fancy using corporeal, but I have to think of something. So maybe next episode we will do that. For the moment, I just realized I can upgrade my tank null to the final tier. And yeah, as I have already mentioned, there are not that many uses for nether stars in this mod pack. Except for a few magical stuff. I did say next episode because for today I actually want to do something else. The thing is, I realized uh, you can convert the EU to LF. So this is a steam turbine which is making us EU, correct? This is an electronic furnace which is consuming LF. If I give it cobblestone, it's gonna work and it's gonna recharge. Although I did try, these guys are not going to accept the LF. They just work with EU. But for the rest of the base, that should be fine. We just need a massive turbine, we convert everything into LF, we use power in order to transfer it, and we can use it across the base. I have already set the pattern for the large steam turbine, which is an amazing recipe. It's just every single item. I guess if this generates a ton of power, then uh, maybe nether stars are going to be useful because we can make some niotic crystals. Not niotic, nitro, yes. I really love multi-blocks. Uh, let us test it. We give you some steam, and you do work. And this is the energy output hatch. It's medium voltage, but it should work. Wait a minute. You don't work? Yeah, you see, it's being charged up here. And this is a steam turbine. Yeah, that took me a while to figure it out. First off, the output hatch is MV. So the cable has to be MV so that it would connect to an energy cell. And yes, we're getting power. The reason that the power is garbage is because uh, we're not getting enough steam. So now the main question is, how do we get a far better one? Uh, high voltage. I can't make the higher tier one anyways. I just made an HP version. Let us try this too. This one is aluminium cable. And you should be able to put it inside the energy cell? No. Hey, you have to replace the cable. Yeah, it's going in. The issue is that I wanted to use P2P tunnels in order to transfer the energy, but it does require a superconductor. There is no other recipe, which is an oversight, I guess. But we can turn off the power reactor, because now we have a far better solution. Well, I thought since this is steam, maybe we can have some sort of a power plant over here where we can have boilers and more turbines. The problem is this guy eats through the steam. I think we are exporting at maximum speed and the steam is just gone. But even with that garbage rate, look how much power we're getting. But I don't really know, can we have like... Two input hatches for steam? Because that seems to be the limit of applied energy six anyways. Yeah, even two is not gonna cut it. There is also something called a high pressure steam, but for the moment, I don't really think I can make it. I can, maybe. But even like this, this is far better than a power reactor. It works much better. We just add some more energy cells and we have a nice buffer. I have been reading the book and unfortunately at this very moment, the turbine is a bust. It does require a huge infrastructure because over here you have the tricky part. Remember that pressurizing water into high pressure water costs a lot of energy, but the turbine will not give it back. There is a way of doing that, but that requires the huge infrastructure. And before doing that, I need another infrastructure over here. This is something that I wanted to do anyways. We need to have an area for blast furnaces. Can I dig like this? Much easier. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to have a total of eight of them and they should fit. It's just that I have ordered the things that we are going to need. The cantle coils are going to be a pain. Yeah, we need 257 more and it's not the best rate. It is perfectly fine. I'm not in a hurry. Okay, we have eight blast furnaces, four of them are going to be operational today, the other four have to wait. They're for different recipes, this one is just for stainless steel. What we are doing at this very moment is that if I want to start making some stainless steel ingot, do you notice the speed? We're not getting it at all. It takes time for the machines to warm up and even if they warm up, it's still not going to be fast enough. It has to be constantly running and I don't really want it to constantly run. It's night time again. <laughs> My goodness. It's like every five seconds. Anyways, what we have over here is a quantum ring, a pattern provider and one ender chest. I have just brought the pattern for stainless steel and we are going to hook it up into this entangled chest. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to distribute it between these four blast furnaces. Extractors are a bit stupid, so they do need upgrades. Because we want it to be round robin. Very good, we can set it up. I think you take acceleration cards. Nice. And then we just take some stainless steel dust and whitelist it. So now if I order 2000 of it, this should be a relatively fast process. Yep, two of them are on. Third one is on. Come on, you can do that. Yes. It's not a very efficient way of doing that because in any case, one of the extractors is going to take priority, so it's going to extract sooner. Unless I make a very long pipe and extract from one chest, but that's not very important because all four of them are working anyways. Modern industrialization has a warm-up curve, so I don't really know how fast the blast furnaces are going to work eventually, so for the moment I have done something with steel ingots. We're using Tech Reborn, which is way faster. You get one every second, so who cares? 
Oh, and by the way, I did not bring the quantum ring just to provide some material into this entangled chest because I've done this at base as well. Uh, this is for steam. I don't know if I have mentioned it this episode or not, but somebody also mentioned that I can use P2P tunnels. Yes, I do know we can use P2P tunnels in order to transfer power. The problem is the recipe. I tried everything. You cannot make an EU P2P tunnel without a superconductor. I mean, I don't know if you can make it with the superconductor. I haven't got the superconductor yet, but nothing else worked. For the other ones, you can use whatever you want. It's fine. For this one, it's just the superconductor. This is a bit faster. I like that. Well, it's four times faster. I should like that. Just before we wrap up, we have to visit the graveyard. Since this has been a very long episode for me, I did not want to add any more graves today, but I did receive a request which I could not ignore. It's actually not one grave, two of them. For a lovely couple, Cotton Man and Nicole. Hey, we just have to make it purple. I also put hearts for them, and then I thought I need to make it a bit more evil, so I added Lilith. I couldn't find the purple hearts. Apparently, it's not available on fabric. My Lord Traverse of Darkness, we don't have purple hearts. You're gone. Okay. I came here to pray for our Lord Travers of Darkness and I found a book, which is weird. Lush, don't do any of the following. Set the ritual on fire, take off your armor, take a totem of undying, go to the chapel. Official RZ. You should never say don't do that to Lush. So we're gonna set it on fire. It looks nice. We're burning flowers. What the? We take off the armor and we take a totem of undying. And then we go to the chapel. Chapel is far, far away. I did not notice. Hello? Anyone here? Oh, Count RZ! How are you? You're not being friendly today. Why are you doing this? Oops. Why am I burning? I don't know why I'm burning, but you're gonna love my levels. I'm just saying. Hello? Oops. I have no idea what has happened, but it seems that I have developed a skin condition to the sun. I think I have to start finding a cure for my condition, and until we do that, I think it's also a good time to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.